So today we have an episode that's dedicated to the language teachers at My Online Schooling and we're joined by Marianne and Noelia. Thank you for being here, both of you. How are you today? Good, thanks. Hi. Hello, Marianne. Tell us how your day is looking so far. What have you been up to today? Uh, I've just been teaching Year 12, uh, so A-level French. Um, about crime and the law and order. <laughs> and Noelia, how's your day looking so far today? Well, my day uh, in the morning has been really good. I, have, was, uh, I was teaching and uh, today we have uh, a couple of lessons on animals and the weather that kids normally enjoy that. And uh, now, now in the afternoon, just, uh, well, so I'm preparing some things for uh, tomorrow's class and then some sports and that will be all. Very good. Very good indeed. Um, and Noelia, tell us which part of the world you're dialing in from for this video podcast. At the moment, I'm living in Madrid, in Spain, but I'm ori originally from the northwest of Spain. OK, so when you say the northwest, that's the part that sticks out over the top of Portugal. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. From the Atlantic coast there. OK, all right. I'm not sure the geography department in the school would appreciate me saying sticks out like that. It's probably <laughs> a, a better term for that. Um, and Marianne, what, what part of the world are you in? I'm in Somerset in the UK. Very nice. Great part of the world. Which, which is your nearest town in Somerset? Um, Taunton. Do you know it? Taunton. No Taunton very well. Great place. Very good. So I wonder, Marianne, just tell us a little bit about how long you've been at my online schooling for. Uh, well, I started not long after um, it was created and launched, actually, in uh, 2017. Yeah. Um, so right near the beginning. So it must have been quite uh, quite a step, really, to to change from what you were doing beforehand into being in an online environment, especially given that it was quite new at the time. Tell us what you were doing beforehand then. Well, I was translating um, French to English, like philosophy texts and um, political science, stuff like that. But I was also doing um, like I'm a storyteller as well. So I was doing uh, like youth work with kids doing storytelling around fires in a in a field. So two very different activities. <laughs> Very, very different. Now, Elia, how, how did you find things joining my online schooling? When was it that you joined? And tell us what you were doing beforehand. Well, I joined the school approximately three years ago when the APAC branch opened. And at the beginning was uh, really different uh, teaching and finding resources for an online environment. And before uh, my online schooling, I was uh, teaching, Engl uh, yeah, teaching English for Spanish and also waitressing because I was living in Australia. So, um, yeah, I was, I don't know, doing what I could <laughs> at the time. So you were living in Australia at the time yeah. when you joined, is that right? Yes. Right. OK. And how did you hear of my online schooling? And tell us what your initial thoughts were of my online schooling as a concept of teaching online. Well, I found uh, the offer in a, in a job where you find... Um, jobs there and at the beginning I was not aware of um, how big the company was that it, it was a full school I thought more that it would be like a language platform uh, for students so when I started delving into the into the company I got a uh, really surprised I good. see I <laughs> see uh, now I'd love to understand a bit more about what a typical day for you both looks like I mean when you're working at my online schooling uh, you've got this this model of teaching online, which is different to a bricks and mortar environment, clearly. But I'd love to understand as well how it looks in the languages department. Can you talk us through a typical day? Marianne, do you want to go first on this? OK, um, yeah, I should just say also before I did teach uh, previously in mainstream schools as well. Um, so uh, it just looks like, um, you know, uh, I have lessons and, um, you know, log on in online and greet my students and we do uh, listening activities, speaking activities, uh, reading and writing activities, make sure I try to make sure I have a balance of all four in most lessons um, and I really love, love to encourage students to do speaking work, I'm very hot on that and I make sure that they go and use the uh, breakout rooms with discipline uh, and make sure that they're speaking, yeah. OK, so you mentioned listening, speaking, writing. There was another fourth one there, wasn't there? Uh, reading. Yeah. OK, and reading as well. Yeah. Perfect. OK, yeah. and in a class environment, which, which is online, how many children do you typically have in a class at any one time? Um, I think there's.
is no typical. I mean, it, um, you know, like some classes have only got two students uh, and then other classes I'll have up to about 15, I think, are the, the biggest class. But even 15 clearly is, is in, in the UK, it's much smaller than a, than a bricks and mortar typical kind of class size, isn't it? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you can and that's why I love it, because you can really give attention um, and, you know, get round to everybody. Mm-hmm. No, Elliot, do you find that you, ha- that you have a similar experience? I-, I-, I could see you smiling and nodding when Marianne said that there's no typical kind of class size or class environment. Uh, is that something that you find is just the same? Yeah, exactly. I, in, as Marianne said, in some classes, I have two students and with such a small group, you get the opportunity to know them more. So, you know, uh, what um, topics they like, uh, which kind of activities work better with them and which don't. And in some others, you have a bigger group. So it's, um, I, in my opinion, it's a little bit more challenging because sometimes they don't turn the cameras on. So you need to balance um, if they are understanding, if they are feeling frustrated or if they are doing good. But yeah, it's, um, well, it's um, a challenge, but something really, really positive. Now, of course, it's very easy, I imagine, in uh, given that you both work for my online school, need to talk about the benefits of online teaching and the work that you do. But I'd love to understand what some of the downsides are, just to keep this real. Now, Elia, what do you find are some of the negatives about teaching online instead of teaching face to face in a physical class environment? Well, I think that it will be that uh, for mm, well, most students, uh, they turn the camera if they uh, feel comfortable, but some others don't. And the same happens with the microphone. So I, as I cannot see their faces, their reactions, their body language, I don't know um, how they're feeling about the task, especially uh, about the speaking task, since they are the most challenging uh, tasks and skill to develop in one learning a foreign language. So... Um, that will be the the biggest uh, like um, hindrance that I find in an online environment for languages. Great, thank you for that, Marianne. Tell us what you find some of the downsides are to that kind of teaching. Yeah, well, it's the same. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it's that um, the lack of immediacy sometimes. Um, but um, you know, there are ways to come or get around it. I find that uh, students that aren't necessarily happy switching on their camera in a, uh, the whole class environment, when you put them into a breakout room, they're happy to share, uh, you know, with just one other person or two other people, uh, they'll switch on their cameras for them. Hmm. Another thing that I find a little bit difficult is, for example, when we are, uh, when I'm introducing new vocabulary, and I give them, for example, five minutes to write them to write all the words down. Since I am not seeing them, I don't know if they have already finished, if they need some more minutes. So that balancing is a, a little bit uh, challenging. So I'd love to understand a bit more about what you both feel is the importance and what the benefits are, I guess, of learning languages in today's world. And the reason I say that is because some people kind of have this view that with technology, we don't necessarily need to learn a language because we can speak into something and, you know, it can almost be translated in, in real time. Tell us, tell us what you think the benefits are to learning languages in 2022. So um, I think really, I mean, from my point of view, um, obviously, you know, having two languages like gives you a lot more. Um, well, it it gives you another um, kind of view of the world, you know, um, being able to communicate with people from cultures that you would never usually be able to communicate with, um, not only like, you know, French people, but, you know, uh, people in French Polynesia or, you know, other parts of the world where they speak French. So um, it really gives you, uh, you know, a greater outlook on the world and a sense of empathy and understanding for others and how the struggles that they might um, be having with your own language as well. So um, it, it kind of gives that. And obviously, um, being able to communicate, people love it if you can speak some of their language, you know, so it really, it allows you to form a more kind of genuine bond with people, I think. That makes perfect sense. I love that idea of, of connecting with people at a deeper level 
based on the fact that you're able to speak some of their language. Um, Noelia, tell us what your experience and understanding of this is. Well, I totally agree with Marianne. Um, languages are an amazing tool to bring people together. And also when you are uh, studying a foreign language, you are not only learning the, the language, the code system, but also the culture, because languages represent the identity of the people. So you're, it also helps you to understand that society. And also, I think that when two or three languages um, are in the same brain, I think it helps us to be more creative, to um, to make connections better. I don't know. I think that we, we develop some other kind of skills, some abstract skills that would uh, help children in other um, in other moments of their lives, not just when they are learning a language. Hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, do either of you two have any examples of that? For example, for me, I speak three languages, and when I I for I find something in Portuguese or in any other language that I don't know, it's easier for me to understand because there are like three linguistic codes in my in my brain, and I can find similarities. This word, I don't know it, but it's very familiar to one I know in English or another one that I know in Galician. So it's I don't know. I I feel that I have more resources than a person that only speaks one language. Definitely, yeah. And you can go by, I mean, through knowing like a couple of Romance languages, like say, you know, French and Spanish, then learning Italian becomes <laughs> so much easier, you know, or, or you can work out Latin. You could go back and work out Latin from knowing <laughs> French and Spanish, for example, yeah. Yes. And Marion, where, where you have languages there that are more similar to each other, you mentioned French, Spanish, and then Italian. I mean, is there a danger that it can start to get confusing and you, you start to use some Italian in Spanish uh, as opposed to learning something completely different, such as uh, Mandarin or, or Arabic? Is there any danger of that? <laughs> well, I've never learned anything other than a Romance language, so um, <laughs> it's hard to say, actually. <laughs> um, I would say, uh, certainly at first, they can get you know, confused, um, you know, your brain tends to want to always, when you're speaking in a foreign language, it wants to go to the first one that it knows. Uh, so it is a kind of case of, uh, it's like a little bit like with like switches and lights going on, you have to kind of like train your brain into the right, you know, methodology and the right way. Yeah. Now, tell us a little bit about with my online schooling, based on the fact that, that, that the school has students from all over the world in over 80 countries. Do you feel that learning different languages provides a good opportunity to represent these different children from all around the world? Yeah, well, I think that, um, I don't know, um, learning a new language can bring many people together. It doesn't matter from where they are. They will always find things in common. And um, also they can, it doesn't matter their background, for example, when they are in breakout rooms, they are having a conversation in that, um, in that target language and they like it, they bond and I think that's something that they really like. And it gives opportunities as well for, um, you know, we do talk about the language, because lots of kids speak other languages at home. Um, so, you know, they have the opportunity as well that they often, you know, make those connections between like even in Arabic, there are similar words in Arabic to French, like coiffeur, uh, like, some, you know, a hairdresser in French is the same in Arabic. So there are lots of opportunities for kids to feel like, you know, oh, I know this because of, <laughs> you know, uh, my home environment. And it, and it gives them a, 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 a real... Um, a boost, a confidence boost, for sure, yeah. And then when it comes to learning different languages, I'm thinking now about some of the uh, some of the parents who might be listening to, to this episode right now. Maybe parents would like to learn a, an extra language. What tips could parents embrace in order to learn languages quicker or at a deeper level? I think they might need to find something that they really like. It can be through music, uh, shows, books, but if you have an objective, just try to find the best resources that will make you happy so you don't feel it like a task, something that you have to do. But for example, if you are, I don't know, studying um, communication or food, try to find videos or songs that will help you to remember 
that all those expressions, for example, while you're walking or a movie that you really like and you have watched it like three times that you almost know the dialogues, watch it in Spanish. So you will focus on the vocabulary, on how the language sounds and everything that will really help to learn and to delve into the language. Give us an example of a Spanish movie that could be really good for somebody to watch. Uh, well, now, uh, Encanto, all the kids are crazy about them. They love it. All the animals that uh, they um, appear on the movie <laughs> and uh, the songs. So that would be a really good chance to improve their Spanish there. Then, uh, for example, Planet 51, that it's a Spanish movie. It's about an astronaut that uh, goes to a planet, but it turns out that the alien is the human <laughs> in their in their planet and it's really fun <laughs> so they could enjoy also their the the language excellent and marianne should we be all watching amelie the the french movie and listening to francis cabrel i'm saying francis cabrel he's the only french singer i know actually <laughs> yeah i mean exactly you know it's about discovering things that you're really into um as noelia says um, I was going to add as well, like, uh, I have a friend who's been learning Spanish on Duolingo. And I've been learning Irish on Duolingo. So I kind of, you know, it's, that's a bit of fun as well. That helps uh, to boost your, uh, you know, your language learning skills. It's great to hear you mention an app like Duolingo. Is, is that something you'd recommend that people embrace in addition to learning a language through a more formal channel like my online schooling or maybe if a parent was learning a language through an evening class? Is it good to have an app like that on, on our phones? I really think so. I mean, it's fun. I mean, you know, it's just like 10 minutes a day and it's, it is, it's kind of... You know, the little noises it makes and stuff, it's quite satisfying. <laughs> now, so that uh, normally we spend um, many time on the phone checking things that we're not really interested in. So if you have uh, one app there to keep improving your, um, your target language, that will be fantastic. So the brain doesn't forget about everything that has been studying. I see, I see. Uh, Noelia, what, which language do you not speak at the moment that you would like to speak at some point in the future? Um, well, I really want to learn Portuguese. I love that language. And at the moment, I can read some books uh, and I can understand most of it. But speaking is a bigger challenge. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, my goal in a couple of years to learn Portuguese. And once I'm done with that, I will uh, I would like to go for Russian. But that's a bigger challenge. <laughs> Oh, wow. OK, a big difference there between Portuguese and Russian, but uh, I'm very yeah. impressed that you're, you're keen to learn that. Uh, Russian sounds beautiful as well when it's spoken. So, so that's fantastic. Um, Marianne, which language do you not speak at the moment? Imagine you could speak any language in the world, magic wand, maybe Duolingo. What, what, would, you, <laughs> what would you learn to speak? Well, I'm starting to learn uh, Irish just recently because I have Irish roots. Uh, and also I'd like to learn Polish because I also have Polish roots. So, uh, yeah. That's that's me. <laughs> okay, Irish and Polish. Uh, that all sounds good, uh, and a bit of Russian and Portuguese. So maybe maybe our next podcast recording we should do in six months' time should be in either Russian or Polish or <laughs> something like that. Should we go for that? <laughs> no, merci. <laughs> yeah, we can try. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well we need to bring this episode recording to a close now. But if anyone's heard anything, and wants to find out more about languages at my online schooling. Where's the best place they could go to find out more about that? Well, on the web page, there is uh, a lot of information and all the team, like, everyone is uh, willing to provide an answer and to uh, solve as many doubts as um, we can have. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Noelia and Marianne. Thank you so much for opening up this world of languages to us at My Online Schooling. It's been really good to hear how it all works, especially it being an online environment. So thank you very much for your time. That's great. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. <laughs>